here as part of our round 10 coverage. You can see that Reed Duke is on Is It Control? And Corey, on the other side of things, Chris Patello on Gruel Adventures splashing blue for Disdainful Stroke in the board. Talk to us about this. Oh, sorry, and there's Disdainful Stroke in the main deck as well. Uh, talk to us yeah. about this matchup and 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 what these two decks are going to be hoping to achieve here. So this Is It Control deck is built to be able to beat any kind of Gruel uh, Adventures, any kind of... Um, Naya Adventures, these a lot of these creature-based decks. So this is exactly what Reed wants. But there's a little spin on this where these disdainful strokes from Chris are going to be really, really big. Normally, you are just able to just jam these Kiora Best the Sea Gods, and really nothing bad is going to happen. But with these disdainful strokes, you can put on a lot of pressure and then just all of a sudden back it up with one disdainful stroke. And then Reed has to be like, well, do I just jam that and mm -hmm. hope for the best? Or do I have to try to make some other play that is not as good as Cure Best the Sea God? So that's going to be the really interesting dynamical shift that's going to happen post board. And we even have the one disdainful stroke that Reed has to be worried about in the main deck. Yep, Keeping them honest here as we see Ranger class going to come down and make a little 2-2. Two -two. Ranger class one of the best cards that's come to us out of the uh, Forgotten Realms set. Mm. Uh, you know, it, it, it's had a quiet old time in Constructed so far. I imagine there are going to be other cards that will make their presence felt, uh, particularly after rotation. I'm looking at cards like Imrith uh, in particular. Yep. We've seen Minsk, the beloved Ranger, see some play as well. But Ranger class, certainly one of the headline acts of the D&D set. It really has done a lot of heavy lifting in the aggressive green decks. Yeah, and uh, has a nice keyword of putting wolves into play. I think that might come into play with the next set as well. I think there might be some support for that card. So I think we're going to see that uh, range of class even get even better uh, yeah. from the new set. So yeah. going to be exciting. As yeah, so we see some of the wolf and werewolf tribal into the uh, into the fray as well. I think we've seen the last of our ranger class here. <laughs> so Botello now in a tricky spot without access to extra lands he could have tried to go for something like in a seeker's chariot this turn with another land thanks to the jasper the jasper sentinel its ability to produce mana but as it is we're just going to see an attack with the two two here and i think that's respecting the threat of a shark typhoon coming down for one see what duke's response is here Gonna see this Prismari command. Ooh, wow, to kill the Jaspera Sentinel in combat. That's pretty interesting. Um, but shuts down the mana. It kind of has a nice um, a nice soul read here that there's not another land to be able to play something big. So pretty impressive here. Maybe a slightly missed opportunity there yeah, with the that's Prismari what I was gonna command. Say. You could have uh, you know, gotten two extra damage here since you don't need that one one to be untapped. Um, so a small little misstep here, um, but it's just two damage. Well, but everything it, adds I mean, up. <laughs> it adds up. I mean, two damage is, is definitely worth a lot in this matchup here. And Just looking at that, I was trying to think if there's any reason that Botello may, may have wanted to keep the one one untapped, but as it was, he could have tapped it for red in conjunction with that uh, the Sentinel that was on its way out. Didn't do so. And now... May fall short on damage, you know. If, yeah, if, and I, if this end, if this game ends with Duke on two life, well, Botello will be kicking himself here. Yeah, and I'm honestly kicking myself for saying it's just two damage. I mean, I that's that's just such an incorrect thing to say. Two damage is very important, so <laughs> maybe a, a big deal here uh, later down in the stretch. Shark Typhoon for one, but we're going to see a Stomp get rid of it before it can block the Dwarf here. Three one will get across uncontested unless there's something like a frostbite drawn but no just a pathway speaking of pathways one played for patello as well doesn't have anything else to do of course handful of four drops although uh, without the stomp i guess he could have played the love struck beast now but as it is this board is reasonably developed patello now... also had had the option to just play that pathway pre-combat and mm. then if the shark goes to try to block a creature you could have just ember cleaved so a little interesting to not play that beforehand um, since it seems like it would be better to get Embercleave down instead of stomping a 1-1 one -one shark. So an interesting play there as well. Triple Look Cure best Sea God here. Yeah. yeah, for Reed. He's 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 got the mana to cast him as well. He just needs the time. Magda off the top. That'll give you a bit of extra oomph with that Rimrock Knight here. 
One thing I really love here from Reed, Reed, of course, setting all the stops to make sure he can bluff whatever uh, to make sure he just doesn't die to this Ember Cleave, but also could have bought Yorian. But that's kind of the indication like, hey, I don't have anything. Right, yeah. but if you uh, if you save it and you kind of bluff something here and then drop Cure Best of the Sea God, you're gonna have time to play Yorian anyways. Uh, but the one problem I'm seeing here is Cure Best of the Sea God jumping down doesn't look like it's even gonna be enough. Reed is just to add too low of a life total that even if he blocks Bone Crusher Giant, being able to just Ember Cleave up the Rimrock Knight is gonna be more than enough for lethal. So I don't think Cure Best of the Sea God as an option. Uh, is a good play. Yeah, Reed agrees, snaps off Omen, and, uh, you know, tries to find something else. Doesn't even need the Ember Cleave as well. It's just lethal on board with yeah. Rimrock Wolf and the 1-1. One -one. That's true, and, I mean, you put the Ember Cleave more or less anywhere. I, I, at this point, Chris could just press Spacebar until Reed doesn't want to play Magic anymore. It's not re It's really look, not looking good for... I mean, look, a clunky draw, right? Didn't didn't find the removal he needed in, the, in, in a timely fashion. Ended up with... Three seven drops and a bunch of lands against an aggressive gruel deck. Chris Patello really just able to take that one. Bit of a walk in the park there for Chris. And we'll see how they want to shift things up post board here. Duke just never really found any footing in that first game. Yeah, exactly. Reed only had one decision point in the game, and that was to make a treasure or do some looting with that Prismari command outside of just dealing two damage. And I think if Reed would have known that the top of his deck was like another Cure Best of Sea God, maybe even a, a third one, uh, I can't remember exactly what was in his hand at the time, he probably would have did some looting instead of trying to ramp out to Cure Best the Sea Gods. But as it stands, making the treasure was a game plan to get Cure Best the Sea God down. It just didn't work out. So, you can see the changes that have been made there. Embercleave comes out. Just too vulnerable to counter spells. I think the Ukraine War doesn't do a hot, lot of heavy lifting. And uh, interesting, look at this. Disdainful Stroke, the one main deck copy, has actually been removed, Corey. Wow. I am quite shocked about that. If the Disdainful Strokes are not for the matchup that's trying to play seven drops that just auto win the game for you, I'm pretty shocked what they are actually for. Sultai Ultimatum being the one that stands out to me. Um, as a for sure include, but I would have thought for sure you want more disdainful strokes in this matchup as well. So, well, Eduardo said to... like is, uh, has been behind the scenes chatting with the players, and he's just let us know uh, in the chat behind the scenes here that Chris Patello actually decided that Roiling Vortex would put more pressure on. Right, he was not. Well, he's looking not to play a, a a reactive game. Apparently, looking to play a pro. And look at these, the mind games as well. He's playing a blue source. He's representing that disdainful stroke as still being in the deck. You love to see it. <laughs> but Eduardo is telling us that uh, the Roiling Vortex was uh, an improvised change here. It was an impromptu change. He didn't plan for it, but just decided on the fly that Vortex would be able to put more pressure on here, here in this spot. So, I mean, Chris Patello, he's uh, he's he's really changing things up at a moment's notice and, and maybe will be rewarded for it here. Look at that. He's drawn the Roiling Vortex too. Yeah, but so far, Chris Patello's draw is not good. Not having any red here, this is a huge problem where now you need a land and an untapped land to do anything and preferably a red land to really start going off. This is going to be okay, but we do see the uh, no. limited all-star of a null coming down to deal with the Cadillac here. Yes, indeed. You can't the, yeah. the draft chaff. Huge so. card here. <laughs> So uh, Riley, no. I got a question for you. What Go would on. what is what is worse to get your Azika's chariot annulled or Dwari disruption? Like what what feels worse? I don't know, man. I mean, the thing is, I think it's Close. still Dwari disruption. I think because so. Because the thing is, like the, the annul, they've brought that in. They care, right? Like they've brought annul in because you're playing <laughs> or they're playing in the main deck because of cards like that. So it's like it's very clear that they're worried about that card. So you know they're. Sh they it's 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 you being like, yeah, that's right. I thought you were scared, right? <laughs> Whereas Dryer Disruption is just like, ah, is that a card? I'm going to count it. I don't care. I was guy who's got this card lying around. You tapped out. You're a fool. I'm going to get rid of it, you know? Yeah, you're going to counter hydrate. anything. Skyclave Shade, even like we saw last match. Like, if you get a chance to Dwari Disruption, you do it. But just look at this here from Chris Patello. Another green source that is not helping him cast a single card in his hand. This is just... Bad news bears for Chris, and it is and this, not, and we're gonna not see working a, out the uh, way he wanted. We're going to see an effective stone rain here with burning hands as well, doing six damage to the, the layer, which becomes green when it's activated. And uh, Chris loses a land here as well, which is super rough. I mean, this is worse than a time walk for him as he had to tap all of his mana, 
and loses a land out of the bargain. So Reed Duke in a much better position than we saw him in game number one for sure here. And this is one big thing I want to point out to any new players or something like this. They're just looking at Reed and be like, why are you tanking right now? You're so far ahead. Just play one of these spells. They're probably going to win you the game. Well, that is true. This is what the best players in the world do at, at a time like this. Reed's like, okay, I'm in a good position, but it's not time to speed up and make rash decisions. It's time to slow down and think, okay, how do I lose the game? Instead of like, what do I need to get myself in a winning position? Reed just thinks, okay, if he does draw a red source, that's the worst Possible. What's the worst card? Maybe Clothis. Can I deal with that? And that's what's really admirable about these high-level players and just how they operate. Oh, baby. Hardcast Shark Typhoon. You there love to see it. It is a very rare sight, particularly amongst the game's pros. Nice draw here for Botello, who finds Lovestruck Beast. He's going to be able to draw some cards off of that Edgewall Innkeeper. Wow, that is a bold attack. Uh, Heart's Desire? No, just the... Uh, just yeah, the last struck beast risk. here, hoping doesn't to find. Doesn't want to risk a negate. Yeah, also maybe hoping to find a green source off the top in order to cast something like a magda, but no, doesn't find it. Just another lair here. So, Patello just cannot find a red source for love nor money. Reed, on the other hand, plenty of red sources for him. Got that sword coming in the exile zone. And, and it's can the blink. Lock. Yeah, can blink the omen here with Yorion. So, refilling his hand nicely. Cross comes the shark. And one thing we want to keep in mind, that Hall of the Storm Giants is in play. So anytime Reed gets, you know, 11, 12, 13, anytime he gets Chris Patello to 13, lethal is being threatened with that land. It's a very scary, looming threat. And yeah, with a, a hand like that, not much you can yeah. do. Six red cards, no red lands. Chris Patello packs them up. Couldn't find any of the red sources that his deck has. So... Going to go to game number three instead. Reed Duke, after really not putting uh, much of a making much of a uh, an impact in game number one, certainly the other way around for game number two with Chris Patello unable to hit his straps. So we head out, heading out to game number three. Now once again, have a look at those sideboard plans. Ox of Agonis and Clothus both coming in for Patello. I like both of these cards in this matchup, particularly the Clothus. Very difficult for the blue uh, red deck to deal with her once she has been resolved. On the other side of things, Shark Typhoon, Disdainful Stroke, trimmed for things like Mind Flight, the best card in Magic, Red Cap Malay, and Burning Hands, Nurture Removal, and then just one copy of Negate coming in too. So much more interactive position here for Duke. He's already playing a very interactive deck. And but uh, obviously from Chris. can afford to cut some of the threats with Shark Typhoon coming out. So this hand here, Edgewall Innkeeper, is going to be really nice with some of those adventure cards. Let's see if... It's going to be played out here on turn number two. Or will he wait for turn number three so he can guarantee getting himself some value off of it? Yeah, this is the tough one because, you know, right away when these adventure decks were coming out, when there wasn't so much removal for Innkeeper all the time, the best play here is play that Great Crown Pathway as a forest, Heart's Desire on the other Lovestruck, and then play Edgewell Innkeeper. And then all of a sudden, you are just playing Lovestruck Beast after another, drawing you cards, and that's just really, really good for you. But with so much removal, especially from this Is It Control deck, we're going to see a lot more of Edgewell Innkeeper being cast on turn four, followed immediately up by a Lovestruck Beast. Never mind. Well, I guess we can do the same here with Rimrock Knight. Just getting value immediately off yeah. this card is what you want to do instead of just hoping they don't have a removal spell because well, they're going to kill the creature. They're going to kill Edgewell and Keeper. It's too good. Yeah, and I think just immediately making sure that you get at least something of a dividend, you're not down a card with Edgewell and Keeper is yep. really important. There's the Burning Hands, and uh, unsurprising to see Duke uh, snap it off here against this Innkeeper at the earliest opportunity. Of course, you don't get a chance to do it before your opponent. You don't get priority between that resolving and your opponent being able to cast a new spell, so it's not like Duke had a chance to deny Chris Patello his card. I remember trying to do that before I learned the rules of magic properly, uh, an opponent of mine was just playing casual game, played a birthing pod, and then I was like, all yeah. right, I'll disenchant it. And my opponent was like, oh, I didn't even get to activate it. And someone watching was like, that's not how it works, dude. Like, <laughs> you can't just disenchant it before he gets a chance to use it. I'm like, no, that's an instant, man. That's how it works. Doesn't work like that. Doesn't you didn't work have a like that. No split second disenchant effect to uh, well, even really second, be like, well, actually. <laughs> even split second wouldn't work, right? Because you don't get priority before they do. 
Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's so a good point. Okay. they play their part. There's magic's nothing you can hard. do, man. Imagine, I mean, Magic's a very hard game. That's why you and I are here, and we're watching Reed Duke and Chris Patello play it instead. In comes the 3-1 in conjunction with that human from Heart's Desire. All right, this is huge right here. Prismari Command, I was going to say, was a nice answer for Chariot, but mm. being used right now, we are probably going to see this Cadillac come down, and it is going to be a problem. Now, yeah. that Prismari Command did ramp into Mind Flare, but this is exactly what Reed didn't want to see. You even saw an eyebrow raise from Reed, which is about as much emotion as you get <laughs> from him <laughs> when he's in the zone. It's yeah. true. <laughs> it is true. Yeah. We talked about how expressive Javier Dominguez is. Reed Duke certainly at the opposite end of that that particular spectrum. Very reserved player. Doesn't wear his heart so much on his sleeve as he does keep it in his armpit. <laughs> yeah, and it's tough here. Like, what do you mind flare just one of these cats and hope that there's nothing to crew? Not very good. Now it's just going to be, I think he's really trying to bluff the fact that there's maybe a removal spell, like another burning yeah. hands for this chariot or something like that, because or just a Mari command shark. or something. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But just a two, two shark plus frostbite or just a three, three shark is not doing enough to keep you in this game as of now. So, so far, huge advantage. Chris Patello here. This is a big attack as well. Using the base to crew the, uh, the chariot here is massive. Another cat's going to be made by the, uh, triggered ability. And I think we're going to see Burning Hands here. That's three mana. Is it Shark Typhoon instead? Okay, this still leaves the option of a Burning Hands after that. Oh, sorry, it's Frostbite. Yeah, Excuse me. If frostbite. we draw it. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, so, yeah, that's the thing. This Shark is probably just being a chump blocker right now. And then we have the Frostbite to finish the Chariot off. But now mm -hmm. Reed has the big choice of, do I want to try to finish this Chariot off or do something like Stomp or Frostbite this cat that's being targeted? It kind of stops the two cats, so kind of a little copycat action. Or do you stop the car that's actually creating the problem? So it decides to kill the cat, it looks like. Okay, Frostbite on the cat means that there won't be a second one created, a chump block with the shark token, as you'd expect here, to soak up some of the damage. But Rimrock Knight is going to push a little bit of extra damage through, no matter what you target here. Across it comes, and Reed down to nine, plays a land, and Roiling Vortex, that damage is adding up. It's not surprising to see that Chris is on a much higher life total than Reed, of course, and uh, Roiling Vortex will slowly but surely whittle down both uh, both players' life totals, but with Duke under, uh, under the gun here, he's the one that has to do something to turn things around. Absolutely, and that rolling vortex here, you know, Chris Patello really uh, uh, flexing on us at the moment. That wouldn't have been the best disdainful stroke without uh, any blue mana here, so props to Chris Patello. It's looking really good. Jasper Sentinel off the top. So I think coming down a little bit here. It's no... Terrific attack. I mean, you can attack with the uh, the chariot, I suppose. Yeah, I'm thinking we're just gonna see Heart's Desire plus Love Struck Beast plus Jaspera Sentinel, Crew Chariot, and copy a cat. Get in for four, which is a great play. Um, and and that'll that'll still have Chris Patel being far ahead, but a little short of lethal. Oh, just getting all in here. This is throwing away a cat. To mm. just get in one more extra point of damage, so but the cat every point counts it so when rolling far, vortex, so. you know. Yeah. Yeah, and the cat replaces itself as well there, so maybe it's not too bad. Jasper Sentinel as well going to come down, and now this is the turn. Duke has to do something. He's on two. He's facing lethal next turn uh, from from all sorts of different angles. Prismari Command is a great place to start here. Yeah. That is a pretty big deal. Let's see if it's enough. So Prismari One mana short. One mana short of dumping the command and the stomp and the giant out. Yep. So here's the thing that would have been very, very good for Duke is if there was only one 1-1 one, one in play, that way you could just stop Lovestruck Bees from attacking as well. That could be a, a valid way um, to really shut that down. There's still the layer, of course, that can turn into a 1-1. One, one. But as it stands, it's like Prismari Command, destroy Azika's Chariot, kill a cat, and play one more blocker. That looks like, that looks like to me that there's exactly two damage still sneaking in with the mm -hmm. layer. 
And then that's not even talking the problem that's looming over this whole game. And that's the rolling vortex. How do you ever deal with it? And I, I just don't see a way out at two. We're going to see Duke go through the motions here, but I just can't see him beating the rolling vortex, let alone the lethal attackers that are on the board. So let's see here. Let's see if Duke can try to keep himself in this, but I think it's going to take a, a severe misstep from Botello, who is currently going through, I would imagine, a list in his mind of all the things that Duke could have. Exactly. Slowing down during these big moments, just like Duke was doing last game. A sign of the greats. Doesn't animate the Seeker's chariot here. Very smart. Shuts down the ability of if you throw four power into the chariot and then it gets Prismari command, all of a sudden you stopped yourself from attacking with four power mm. plus lost the ability on the chariot. So really smart to avoid that. Reduces the blowout potential of a card like Prismari command. So Botello playing very, very clever magic here by making sure that Reed's two for one potential is as low as possible. Doesn't attack with the Lovestruck Beast. Did have the option to. But just attacking with four creatures, a total of five damage. This this was one of the ways where Reed does not die on the spot. Yeah, um, Reed will live to you, fight another day here. Yeah, will live to have Rolling Vortex kill him another day, more than likely. <laughs> but <laughs> well, the thing, but right? like Chris look is looking at this here. at this position of being like, I I only need to get one damage through. I don't need yeah. to hit for two. I only need to get one damage through. And Reed knows that as well. He actually can't afford to won't. take any damage here. He won't get any damage through here. So Reed will have one extra turn to find something like, I don't know, Brazen Borrower if it's in the deck. There's one in the sideboard. So pretty unlikely. I'm looking at the rest of the list, and I am not seeing another way out of it except lethal damage of his own. Here's the interesting thing. Lethal damage okay. of his own is somewhat possible with that Hall of the Storm Giants. If we, But we need to get a 1-1 one -one for that Lovestruck Beast. Okay, so here it is. There's Stomp. Oh, yeah, Stomp has to be aimed at the creature. I was going to say, if we can Stomp at Chris Patello here and attack with Hall of the Storm Giants plus the Mind Flare, that would be 12. But as but it you, stands, you've still that's got, not possible. You've still yeah, got the lair. You've much. still got the love struck yeah. beast. No, I'm trying to think of any possible way where Reed could attack for lethal damage next turn because that seems like the only way outside of drawing that one brazen borrower, if it's even in the deck, oh, and okay. never mind. Well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> never mind, finds a second roiling vortex after all of that. And so Chris Patello is victorious and takes out Reed Duke in uh, a, a thrilling game three. Much, much better stuff from both players there in game number three. After game number one and game number two were both rather lopsided affairs in each respective direction, game number three.